We've got. Give us a <laughs> <laughs> we have a count. Low water tomorrow is at 5.42 in the morning and we need to leave just after low water uh, from Bangor which is on just off the edge of the map and we need to come round and we need to be coming into Dunkadee Sound here a couple of hours after low water because that's when the tidal stream will change and it will carry us through this gap and that will save us all the bother of going from Bangor out along the long way and down into Carry Sea. This way here the tide will carry us through nice and quickly and all we have to do is stay between these two sets of boys here. Now we can see those on a bigger scale on this inset here. So basically we come down from Bangor, we come down between this cone and this can, and then we come down between this cone and this can. And as you can see on the chart, it's marked as quite a bumpy area. But if we get the wind and the sea right and the tide right, we'll just sail through here with no bother. And that's what we hope to do. through Donnacadee Donna Donna Sounds and um, basically you have four buoys that mark the channel and you just go through them. It's nearly two and a half to three knots of current in here at the moment and you can just about see the wake coming off that red can but it does mean that we're coming through the Copeland Sounds um, a respectable six knots and we're really not pushing at all the one thing that you really do need to look out for though is that there's a quite a few lobster pots oh this one's called Deputy Yeah, you can see that the current's changed, and luckily we're going to be taking full use of that uh, current all the way over to the Isle of Man. We thought it was a loose fender, but it's actually a lobster pot, and this is these are the lobster pots. Oh, and you can see the other white one out there. Oh yes, and you can see the white one, but they're the lobster pots. I'll show this in the software because there's not a chance of me zooming on it but that's one of the another's lobster pot and that is so hard to see you can just about see some really pretty brightly coloured houses on the front there and in the foreground that's not actually a lobster pot that's actually a different marker but You've got another little red can there. We are going that way and the wind is dead astern. Unfortunately, there are these big rollers beginning to build and they're at least a metre high and some of them are bigger than that. And when they get under you, they just literally throw the boat from one side to the other. And it's very difficult to control the boom and the sails. Um, so we've taken the simple solution and we've put them away and we're just motoring and we're hoping the wind will come round west of it and then we can put the sails up and have them held against these flipping rollers that are giving us a very unpleasant passage. 
Well, we've got 20 miles to go, so it's not the end of the world yet. Uh, like you say, though, the thing is also, though, um, like um, one of the things that's going to happen in our refit is we're going to have a, a boom break because we don't have anything, do we, love? No, we don't. Um, we need something to sort it out because when we get one of these, particularly with the light winds you have at the minute, the boom just rolls from side to side of the boat and then it starts to jive and it's dangerous. It, it is. could hit either New York Gainer or it could break the traveller or it could damage the boom itself or it could damage the mast. So. It's just not worth having it out in these conditions. It's mm. much safer for all of us to put them in away. But unfortunately our Genoa is a heavy weather seal and in light winds like this it's just too heavy to stay up by itself. We need a light wind seal, we need a lighter fabric. Um, it has to do with a spinnaker or a whisker pole just to pull the Jenny out. Maybe that would stop the collapse. So, just one of the 999 things, things that we have to do. <laughs> but we have at least sailed her. Oh, yes. And um, now that we're going to go in for the refit, you know, we haven't wasted good, good sailing weather. No, we had a really good sail this morning down from the Copeland Islands, um, down the Arctic Peninsula. And that was very, very pleasant. Um, but once we turned out into the Irish Sea and the um, current from the North Channel, it just started building up this swell, which is obviously somewhere in the um, sea above Ireland. It's coming down through the channel. And it comes this far down, just makes it very unpleasant. Yeah, well. <sighs> we'll get there though, won't we, Bev? I hope so. I can see where I'm going. <laughs> With all those cliff faces. Yeah. And then the hills just stop. Yeah, and like you say, you can see it's um whereas before I thought it was Scotland. Now you can see that it's actually part of the island, but just low. Whereas this is the hills here. Oh, we've tied up to yet another harbour wall. And shock horror. The angels. Hmm? Oh my god. Okay, Bev, now that we're in, how many layers do you have? Let's find out. <laughs> right, so it's a pair of gloves. <laughs> oh, yeah, got a life jacket. <laughs> we have a coat. Now we have a um, fleece, which um, we've actually got a spare. So if you want to subscribe, you can get one of those. Oh, and now she's into her salad pets. <laughs> oh. No, we're not going to do the two trousers because I do know you're wearing two pairs of trousers under your salad pets, but when... <laughs> no, we're stopping there, Bev, but just to give you an idea, so Bev's wearing two pairs of trousers under her salad pets, a t-shirt and a cardigan. And a fleece. Yeah. But under the salad pets, we right. saw that we saw the uh, cardigan, and the fleece, and the uh, the um, yeah. uh, windproof come off. So that's what you need to wear if you're going to sail in the UK. None of this bikini stuff. <laughs> we do fancy it though, sometimes, don't we, Bev? Definitely. But maybe swimsuit. Oh, true.